You know, in life, just like when a soldier steps onto the battlefield, we're faced with a clear choice, to triumph or to face defeat. It's the same in our spiritual journey. When we're up against those dark challenges, winning isn't just an option, it's a necessity. Because if we don't, the adversary, the devil, he's going to try and bring us down even more. But here's the good news. With God by our side, we're not just fighting, we're winning. I feel this strong message from God for you today. He's declaring an end to all those years of struggle and defeat. He's transforming every single battle in your life into a blessing. Now, if that resonates with you, if you believe that, type a powerful Amen in the comments below. And you know, just like David stood against Goliath, today you're going to uncover the incredible power of God that not only defeats, but utterly disgraces the enemy. This power, my friends, it's going to shift your circumstances. And stay with us, because at the end of this video, we're going to pray together. These prayers, they're going to bring this message to life in your own journey and deepen your connection with our Heavenly Father. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our Daily Praise channel. It's your way of staying connected and receiving more of these life-changing messages. You know, when we flip through the pages of the Bible, it's clear that every single person from the mightiest king to the humblest believer had their share of tough times. Everyone faced battles. Some were physical, others emotional. Think about the widow from Zarephath. She struggled financially. And even Jesus faced challenges. The key thing to remember here is that in each of these stories, God stepped in just at the right time. Let's take David and Goliath, for instance. Goliath, this giant, had the people of God living in fear. Nobody, not even the bravest soldiers, dared to face him. His threats alone were enough to keep the entire army of Israel up at night. But then, God empowered David. David, who was just a young shepherd boy, stood up to Goliath not with fear, but with boldness, because he knew God was with him. In 1 Samuel 17, David says something powerful. He tells Goliath, You come at me with weapons, but I come in the name of the Lord, the Lord who you've insulted. Today God's going to hand you over to me. I'll defeat you and show the world that it's not about weapons. The real victory comes from the Lord. It's such a powerful reminder for all of us that no matter the battle with God, victory is always within our reach. Friends, I want to encourage you right now, wherever you are, to stand firm and face those challenges head on. Imagine those big problems. Maybe it's a legal issue that's been keeping you up at night. Just boldly say to it, Today, God is handing you over to me. I'm going to overcome you because this fight is the Lord's, and He's turning all of this into a blessing for me. Let your heart agree with a mighty Amen. You see, what you've just declared isn't just words. It's a powerful statement backed by God's own strength. Believe that. Remember, nothing is impossible for God. He swiftly dealt with the terror that haunted the children of Israel for years. Just like that, God can turn every difficult situation in your life into a blessing if you just believe and hold on to Him. And keep in mind, when the Bible talks about giants, it's not just referring to a tall person. It's describing something as big as a mountain. Sometimes our battles are huge, like a severe illness that no doctor can fix. Think about the woman in the Bible who suffered for 12 years, but then one moment with Jesus changed everything. That's the power of faith. That's the power of believing in God's might. Today I want to speak directly to those of you who've been facing tough times. Maybe it's been a long struggle with finding a job, challenges in your marriage, or any other kind of oppression. I'm here to tell you, in the name of Jesus, that God is putting an end to those struggles today. Now you might be wondering, how can you really experience a life-changing encounter with God? It starts by looking inward and making sure your life is in line with God's principles. Don't be misled by those who say you don't need God to live a successful life. They're taking you down the wrong path. Your relationship with God, your salvation, it's crucial. There are blessings, incredible blessings, that are only available to those who are walking right with God. Once you set things right with Him, He welcomes you with open arms. But it doesn't stop there. 
There are other key steps you need to take to fully unleash those blessings in your life. Let's talk about something really powerful. Prayer. You see, prayer is like a key that unlocks doors, even those doors that seem completely bolted shut. We all face battles, don't we? Challenges that seem too big, too tough. But here's the thing. You can't avoid these battles, but you can definitely win them. And often these battles, they're more spiritual than physical. What we see happening in our lives, these struggles, they often start in the spiritual realm. The Bible in Ephesians 6.12 puts it beautifully. It says our real fight isn't against what we can see and touch, but against spiritual forces, powers we don't see. That's why prayer should be like a daily conversation with God. It's like saying, God, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. It's acknowledging our own limits and inviting God to step in. When we open our hearts in prayer, we're really saying, God, I'm relying on you because without you, I just can't make it. You know the devil, he's quite aware of how powerful prayer is. It's like our secret weapon against him. So he'll try his best to keep you from praying. The less you pray, the stronger he thinks he can get against you. But always remember, we serve a God who can do anything. He's the God of possibilities. All he asks from us is to bring our troubles to him, to ask him to turn our negatives into positives. When we don't pray, we're really just limiting ourselves. Sure, God knows what we need, but he still wants us to ask him. It's not too much, is it? Just keeping that line of communication open with God, it's crucial. Imagine you're waiting for a really important call. You wouldn't just leave your phone uncharged, would you? No, you'd make sure it's ready to go with a full battery and good signal. That's how it should be with our prayer life, too. If we're not connected with God, we're like that phone with a dead battery. We miss out on so much. Take Daniel from the Bible as an example. He knew how vital prayer was, no matter what. People tried to stop him, but he didn't give in. He kept that line to God open always. And remember, when you feel weak, that's the best time to pray even more. There's no perfect time for prayer. Morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you can, let your prayers flow. Just talk to God. He's always listening. Let's talk about prayer and humility. Two things so close to God's heart. You know, with God, you don't have to hold back. He's not looking for space or feeling overwhelmed. He's not like us. He never gets tired of hearing from his children. Sometimes I know praying continuously without seeing immediate results can feel exhausting. But don't give up. If you keep at it, you'll start to see those promises come to life. Like turning your battles into blessings. God doesn't break his promises. Those blessings, they might just show up quicker than you think. Now about humility. It's such a crucial thing. A humble heart recognizes that it can't do it all alone and lets God lead. Pride, on the other hand, tries to show off, saying, I can do this without God. But you know God can't really work with that attitude. If you're longing for God's help, you've got to be willing to step back and let Him drive. It's okay to be in a situation where you don't have all the answers. But looking for solutions outside of God, that's where we go wrong. If you're at a loss, remember, God knows the way. Until you let Him show His power, He won't step in. So invite Him into every part of your life, no matter how small it may seem. Drop the pride and watch as God transforms all your challenges into incredible blessings. Next up, let's talk about faith and hope. Two incredibly powerful forces in our walk with God. Faith is all about believing you've received what you've asked for, even if you haven't seen it yet. It's also about knowing deep down that God can do what you're asking Him to do. This belief, this trust in God, it's crucial for seeing your blessings come to life. Take King Jehoshaphat, for example. He had a mighty army, skilled and ready for battle. Most people would think that's enough for victory. But Jehoshaphat, he knew better. He understood that without God, even the strongest army could fall. When we place our trust in God, victory is not just a possibility. It's a certainty. Think about David and Goliath. David's trust in God was what powered his victory. He faced Goliath, something everyone else feared, because he remembered how God had helped him against a lion and a bear. He knew if God had come through for him before, he would do it again. And then there's Joseph. His journey to his God-given destiny wasn't smooth at all. 
His brothers sold him, not caring what would happen to him. But even when he ended up in prison for something he didn't do, Joseph never lost faith. He didn't blame God for his troubles. Instead, he kept his eyes fixed on God, knowing that somehow, someway, God would turn his struggles into blessings. That's the power of unwavering faith and hope. Now here's something you might not know, but it's important. The God we read about in the Bible, both in the Old and New Testaments, he hasn't changed. His wisdom, his power, it's all still as strong as ever. He's still God and he'll always be God. There's absolutely no reason for you to lose your faith and trust in him. Even when we're not at our best, he remains faithful, working everything out for our good. Believe me when I say God is about to turn your challenges into blessings. You've got to believe it and keep your hope alive. There's also something else really important, a lifestyle of praise, worship, and thanksgiving to God. You might have heard it said, thanksgiving is an application for more. It means we should start praising and thanking God even before we see our blessings come to life. Remember, the battles you're facing now, they're just temporary. They won't last forever. But how you respond to them that can make all the difference. Think about Joshua and the children of Israel. When they were on their way to take over the promised land, they didn't rely on weapons to bring down the walls of Jericho. Instead, they praised God, and that was enough. And then there's King Jehoshaphat. He told the people of Judah to praise and worship God right there on the battlefield. To some, that might have seemed foolish, choosing worship over fighting but it's a powerful reminder of how our praises can lead us to victory. Jehoshaphat really understood something crucial. The battle belongs to God. He knew that even with the mightiest army, if God didn't want them to win, they wouldn't. So he chose a different strategy, praise and worship. And guess what happened? While they worshiped, heaven's armies took up the fight. God set ambushes against their enemies. It's like this. When we praise, it throws the kingdom of darkness into total confusion, and God stands up from his throne for us. So my friends, start praising and worshiping God now for your victory. Don't wait until you see the results. Remember, God lives in the praises of his people. Sometimes, what prayer struggles to achieve, praise does in an instant. And there's another key point, obedience to God. It's not just about doing the easy stuff, but following all that God asks of us even when it's tough. Sometimes we think we're being obedient by doing most of what God says, but partial obedience isn't really obedience at all. If God tells you to give up everything and follow him to end a difficult season in your life, holding on to some things won't bring the change you're hoping for. Always remember, 99% obedience is still not complete obedience. Let's talk about something really important, never giving up on God. There's this song that goes, God is able to do all that he says he'll do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. What a powerful message. It's a reminder that God, who's there to help us in our toughest times, he's not going to give up on us. He's always there, our help in times of need. When every door seems closed, remember to look up to the one who created you and keep focusing on him, no matter what comes your way. Think about Job from the Bible. He had every reason to turn his back on God. From a human perspective, Job's life was blameless. So why did he not complain or question God when everything went wrong? It seems strange, doesn't it? But that's the mark of someone who truly loves God. Even in the worst of times, Job didn't let go of God's hand. His wife even told him to curse God and give up, but he refused. He said, should we accept good from God and not trouble? Through all his trials, Job never sinned with his words. Now your situation might not be as severe as Job's, but how are you handling it? Are you listening to discouraging voices around you? Your situation might seem frustrating and hopeless, but remember, God can turn it around if you just hold on. Even if your trials are greater than Job's, there's nothing too difficult for God. But if you give up before your blessing is revealed, you won't experience the fullness of what God has in store for you, so keep holding on, no matter what. Friends, I want to remind you today, just like every day, that you've got the power to shape your life with your words. Think about it. Each morning when you open your eyes, you've got a fresh start. So why not kick it off by declaring the good stuff? Tell yourself, hey, 
Whatever challenges come my way, God's turning them into something amazing for me. Sure, it might look like there's a lot of negativity around, but keep your focus on the positives. Keep speaking those good things into existence. Remember, if God promises it, He's going to make it happen. And here's something else to ponder. When you're doing things for God, make sure it's coming from the right place. God isn't just looking for us to do stuff for Him. He's looking for that genuine, heartfelt intention. He loves it when we serve Him because we truly want to, not just because of what we might get out of it. When God sees that our hearts are in the right place, that's when He really gets to work in our lives. Let's take a cue from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember those guys in the fiery furnace? They were so committed to God that even if He didn't save them, they were still not going to bow down to anyone else. That's the kind of love and dedication we should aim for. Love God with everything you've got from the bottom of your heart. Now, friends, let's come together in prayer. Heavenly Father, our amazing Creator, I'm just in awe of you. You're our mighty Redeemer, and I'm here to say thank you. Thank you for every battle you've won on my behalf, for the ones you're fighting right now, and for turning challenges into blessings in my life. Your greatness is beyond words, and I lift your name higher every day. Lord, you bring joy into my life. Even on the days when I fall short, your faithfulness never wavers. I elevate your name above all names. God, I'm standing in your presence in the light of your mercy, asking for your forgiveness. I admit, Lord, that I've made mistakes in my thoughts, in my words, and in my actions. I'm asking you to look at me with your compassionate eyes. Please have mercy on me. Let me be a part of the wonderful things you have planned for your children. And thank you, Lord, because I trust that your forgiveness is real and you've washed my slate clean. Lord, today I'm reaching out to you, asking for your touch on my heart. Please calm any fear and anxiety I'm feeling about the challenges in my life. I realize, Lord, without you, I'm just wandering aimlessly. I'm opening up my heart to you, ready for your guidance. Lead me through these tough times. I need you now more than ever. God, grant me the grace to find the silver lining in every cloud. Bolster my faith, for you are my rock and my strength. You've promised victory over every obstacle and to turn trials into blessings beyond my imagination. I believe, Lord, that with you nothing is impossible. Step into the midst of my struggles and create something beautiful. Lord, help me keep my eyes on you. When discouragement tries to weigh me down, let the Holy Spirit turn it into encouragement. You're my safe place, my refuge. Your name is like a fortress, and as I run to you, I know I'm secure. With the Holy Spirit's guidance, I'm ready to receive all the blessings you have for me. Lord, remove anything standing in the way of your plans for me. I declare in Jesus' name that as a child of God, I am more than a conqueror. Thank you, Father, for I know the battle is already won. I can hear the sound of your blessings rushing towards me. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comments below. Help us spread the word of God. Give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Your support means the world to us. It's what keeps us going, creating more videos that uplift and inspire. And don't forget to subscribe to our daily praise channel. We've got so much more to share with you. Make sure to check out the next video. Thank you and God bless.